Okay, I'm back everybody. So I partially took my, um, started disassembling my um, MK2. This is the one I call Air Pig. I currently only have uh, the one 700 uh, cc uh, carbon fiber cylinder on it for air because I've been doing so much experimentation. Um, you'll notice that I've added the uh, Saber Tactical the long version or the longest version they have um, to my system um, with the clamp up front here but so I checked didn't use the barrel uh, band from Black Arts Design um, and the groups weren't quite the same so I did so to catch everybody up I did add go ahead with uh, it's an 800 millimeter barrel now changed out to the 800 millimeter 22 caliber barrel on the air pig uh, I'm now pushing uh, 35 grain NSA's at uh, 1100 feet per second very easily i you know when summer weather comes around i'll brag about how much i can get out of the 40 grains as for now i'm really happy that i get 35s and 36 grains going at 1100 feet per second so long story short this isn't the end answer to barrel stability to all that stability that i want to see so this is going to be a little bit of a long video I apologize, I'm going to kind of rant. Um, so I'm still using this probably, okay, I can't do it one-handed, right in here, right at, the, right at the tip of the air cylinder for barrel stability. But that is mainly because it's a um, 800 millimeter barrel. And personally, I believe they should have built this completely out here. And I have another rant. I believe they should have come in here uh, made another one of these clamps, these clips that go over the shroud, back into here and back into here, okay? I personally believe it would have made a difference. So let's go ahead and unscrew this. This is not exactly what the video is about, but we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this. And y'all can, I was gonna clean up my workbench but I'll just go ahead and show you what a chaotic mess it is because I never stop to clean anything up. I'm always off to the next experiment, okay? And let's go ahead and now that I've removed the magazine, forgot to decock it, everybody can blow up about that and see if I care. Anyways, so we'll go ahead and unscrew um, and we're gonna just pull this all out together because the main thrust of this uh, video is going to be about bedding your barrel bedding your liner okay so we get our 10 our 10 millimeter out here and we pull this jam nut loose and we get this bad boy off there and I've got some other exciting news not just so I started pulling this all loose because I've already showed you the video about this that goes in the end of the shroud, right? Okay, so I'm pulling this all apart because I'm going to do this shroud on this 800 millimeter barrel. And I'm going, okay, I still haven't showed these guys, still haven't showed these guys what I've got going on for accuracy. So. Before I pull this out of here and show you, and you you guys can all laugh and, and hee-haw, but this 800 millimeter barrel is pushing 35 grain um, NSAs at 1100 feet per second uh, in two to seven mile per hour wind, and I'm still getting, uh, you know, in two mile per hour wind, I'm getting um, roughly around you know, those half inch group thumbnail, my fat, dirty thumbnail right there. So, okay, I should go ahead and buy myself. Uh, well, I've tried to buy some, 
camera mounts and stuff for my phone and for a camera, but we're just gonna pull this. Okay, can't do this on camera. You're gonna have to just excuse me while I pull this out. All right, this is a pain in the butt. This video is going like heck, but who cares? All right, so I'm gonna show you what I've got going on here. Okay, more of my messy bench. So this is how I bed the liners inside the original equipment. Uh, what do we call this? Tube. So it's the same thing. I wrap this, I use calipers, I measure every one, knocking stuff over with calipers and I get the average and I make it fit nice and snug in here with every, every one I'm going. And I'm going roughly at about every almost an inch, right at an inch. Anyways, we don't need to know that. But anyways, doing a wrap of tape, uh, very exacting. The reason I do that is because when you put that barrel nut on there, what did I do with it? Did you guys see where I put that barrel nut? Um, anyways, you put that barrel nut on the end here and you tension it down you're essentially causing, if you get too much tension one time, you're causing this wave effect. If you don't get enough atten uh, tension the next time, you know, you, you'll get a different wave effect. It's gonna cause your gun to shoot different. Now you can put this barrel, slide this uh, liner in here. I can't do it on camera because I can't keep the gun still because there's that much tension. It's pretty tight. So you can't, don't have the problem with getting too much tension, you know, with your 10 millimeter wrench, or people get all kinds of spastic. Oh, they're gonna mark it and torque it to a specific torque level. Well, I've eliminated all of this, and you can too. This is blue painter's tape. I love this stuff, obviously. So, but I am throwing some blue painter's tape away today and we're going to put this bad boy on this gun too bought several of these because i have four of these impacts still um to eliminate that part of my blue painters tape but so anyways i don't have any problems with uh how this gun shoots after every time i pull these liners I pull these liners out and I use regular hops gun cleaner on the liner by itself, okay? So I'm always pulling these out about every 150 to 300 shots to clean them. But I'm not gonna spend 30 patches and 20 minutes cleaning a liner. I'm five patches and using hops gun cleaner on there and then I follow it up with one uh, ballast all patch and a dry patch and I'm done so I do pull my liners when I clean them you don't want to use gun cleaner if you're gonna leave it in the in the shroud in the in the tube whatever you want to call that so anyways just ranting on and on and on so that's how I avoid the problems that you can get I do like these 800 millimeter barrels a lot easier to tune for They've got a, a larger tolerance. Next thing I'm gonna rant about is this gentleman here, Hunter Tactical, is putting out these magazines. Heck of a nice guy. We'll go ahead and we'll post in the description his website. He's doing a good job on these magazines. You guys know I have Erlis uh, 3D printed magazines. I'm a big fan of, of uh, Orion the Iguana Hunters magazines. This guy's making excellent magazines too. Um, so 
he makes different lids depths so that you can shoot different ammunition different length slugs if you're a slugger like me this one is the 12.1 millimeter and I believe the other one is uh, a 10 or an 11 we're gonna we're gonna see that we're gonna laugh our rear ends off while I try to one-handed get this old oh, look I can see I can do this one-handed just got to show off this guy's magazines this is how you get the lid off so that's locked that's unlocked and we just lift that met that lid off now and what you got is a, a locking uh, cog mechanism. I don't know how to explain that. Anyways, so I was going to fault this guy because in the past, you know, looking at different magazines that are built and problems we've had with the FX magazines and everything, the spring tension is really, really strong on this magazine. But I've been shooting this for roughly a week now. And I'm getting no clipping. He's doing a really good job on, on these magazines. That's what it looks like inside. So the original that he, that he sends out with everything is a 10.5 millimeter lid. And then you can then you can order separately. He says a 12.1 millimeter lid. So I will post a link for his uh, his web page. Now that I've wandered off and drove you all crazy, but this really does. You just drop that lid right in there with this dog and this dog separated like that. You give it a twist. There's no break-in period that I've seen. You put it in the gun. I've tried this on my MK2, that it's highly modified. It's got so much stuff all changed on it. It's just, it's a nut job. I've tried it on my, uh, my M3s. Works on both guns. Um, have, have no complaints they they just work flawlessly pretty tough design they've got the, the holes to where you can he's got the holes where you can see how many shots you got in there anyways that's what I have for you today the weather's been crappy I haven't uh, I've, I've been shooting but I haven't been shooting awesome I've, I've been doing that 135 yard where I can shoot uh, one inch groups, you know, because our weather has been uh, seven mile per hour gusting to 25 mile per hour winds in my lovely town. So anyways, uh, just to give you guys a quick peek, um, give you guys some updates on what I've been doing. Uh, I should leave my air guns alone and just shoot them, but uh, when it's crappy weather, I get bored and I like to experiment. So anyways, uh, go ahead and make comments. I, I don't mind. I, I like talking to people uh, and giving them what information I've found out. This is a game changer. This is a game changer. Oops, I got blue tape on it. Imagine that, me, blue tape. Um, and these magazines, hey, another game changer. These are things that we can do a lot cheaper than, than buying everything from the big box store, right? Anyways, I will go ahead and I will post a link in the description for both of these products now uh, where you can pick these up and uh, People, leave your air guns alone. Don't be a nut job like me. <laughs> Y'all have a great week. We're almost to the weekend. Everybody, enjoy your shooting sport. Hey, that was a really incredibly dumb ending. I'll have to follow up with more of that. Bye-bye. <laughs> From the FX fanboy.